when I pull up to where I want to start fishing, the first thing I do before I even put my gear on is go to a vantage point, whether that's a hill, a bridge, or just a good spot along the bank with my polarized glasses and do some observations. What I'm doing is observing the other fishermen if possible. I'm trying to see what they're doing and then how they're doing it by observing their body language. Are certain anglers having more success than others? If so, why? I'm also paying close attention to the quality of the water. Is it murky? What's the color like? Is it fast flowing? Is it high? Is it low? These are all factors that will come into play when you plan on what you're going to use. This is difficult to do in the dark, but there are some things you can still observe, so try your best. It's important to do this quietly and from a distance so you don't disturb other fishermen. Depending on the parking access, there's two different methods that I like to implement when fishing. If the parking space is downstream from where you intend to fish, you can start at the parking lot and you work your way up to that hole or spot. Almost all fish, no matter what target species you're going after, will face upstream as they sit in the water. This allows the water to flow through their gills so they can get their oxygen, and it allows them to see the incoming food sources floating down the river. This makes it very important to approach from downstream up so that you don't easily spook the fish. The second method that I like to use is actually parking far away from where I want to fish and upstream from that position. Doing this allows me to walk downstream without throwing my line in and just observing the water as I go, noting where I might want to fish or even being able to spot fish along the way. Once I get to where I want to fish, then I can start slowly working back up until I get to my vehicle and then call it a day or repeat the process or move somewhere else. I understand this isn't always possible based on parking access. Things can get pretty tight on the river sometimes. But I like working one spot and then moving on once I don't have any luck in that spot. For salmon season it's a little different. Most people will typically stay in one spot all day and wait for the fish to push up through their position. But my favorite method of working the water is through Euro nymphing, a fly fishing technique. The most important aspect of Euro nymphing is keeping a tight line and a constant flow with the flow of the water. You want your rig to drift at the same speed of the water to give itself a natural presentation. On the screen here, I've got a aerial view of the upper DSR right next to the black hole in the Salmon River in Pulaski, New York. What I'm going to use here is the gentleman in the red. And first I'm going to depict a perpendicular line across the stream from his position. That's going to be our center point. Next, to effectively cover the water, he's going to cast out a short distance at a 45 degree angle from that perpendicular point, upstream. It's going to float or, or drift downstream in a fan-like motion, and then at 45 degrees past the perpendicular, he's going to cast it again at the same spot. You can repeat this a few times until you feel comfortable that there's no fish there, and then what you do is you just pull some more line out. I like to pull about two feet at a time and do the same cast. So this gives you another drift about a foot and a half to two feet away from your first one in the same fan-like motion. As you can see here, this is the water coverage that you're going to get. You can keep doing this until you get to the edge or in this case, uh, you're going to run into more fishermen than, than the edge. So just be respectful. This picture here is difficult because of all the people in the photo, but I wanted to make a point. Be sure to pay close attention to large structures such as rocks and logs, and then the fast waters behind those, as those will hold a lot of fish usually. Now if you're not shoulder to shoulder with people, whether it's salmon fishing or you're trout fishing a small stream, once you are satisfied that you've worked the water from your toes to the other side of the creek or river, then you need to move upstream or downstream depending on which way you're working. I typically move three to five steps, cover an area quickly, and then repeat the process over and over again. This is the most efficient way to cover a lot of water. While keeping your line tight, it's important that you're observing it as it floats downstream. Sometimes you may feel a hit, whether it's hard or soft. Other times the line may just stop moving in which a subtle take occurred. 
and you may have a fish on the end of the line. Click here to check out the entire salmon fishing series that I covered this year in 2022.